So I think my biggest fear is, I, I mean, I really have a list, but my first one is just kind of sitting there all day, and the second one's not really like a, a stress, I would say, but kind of my, um, is that I don't want to disappoint people. Someone to come up and immediately say that they don't want me to interpret. They don't understand me, and you know, all I want to do is just uh, facilitate the communication. So really both of those are kind of my fears. And the, the, the second one is kind of just like them being frustrating with me, frustrated with me and my skill, or some sort of communication and then taking the power away from the consumer. And just the variety of calls. It's just like one situation, one drastic situation to the next. And just being able to change my mind and my emotions from one call to the next is a struggle for me. It's funny that we've talked about it in class and what were you talking about before class? The level of what, what were you saying before? The level of saving. Saving level of saving people and being able to help people. That's what we were talking about before class. Just saying one dire situation um, that can be, you know, a sad situation and then maybe going to another, the next situation that is a really happy situation. And just conveying that emotion For example, when you saw the, the baby that was blue, you noticed that the baby's skin had been changing to blue. And knowing as the interpreter is that I can't help the person that's through the video call. It's just a video call and I can't like let go. I can't let go of my emotions and being able to not save the consumer. And Knowing that is, and then my, my other fear, my first fear is just disappointing the consumer. So I, I okay, the first one that you were saying is disappointing the consumer, and I get that. But how it's going to happen, and how can you help them? And the word disappointment and that level, their level of disappointment, the consumers, is it, you know, you have to think about the situation. Is it because of me? Is it because of them? You know, and involving yourself emotionally. Is it always, why, why is the consumer feeling the emotions that they're feeling? Angry or sad? Is it you, the interpreter? Or is it something else? You know the famous saying, you always hurt the ones that you love. They do love us, so they see me interpreting, and you know, if they're mad, they want someone that can see their emotion, and that can pick up on that. So really, they're not mad at me as the interpreter. I'm just kind of the middleman. They're mad at the person they're talking to on the other side of the phone. You have to know when to let go, and not to connect emotionally. And I don't think the disappointing factor really happens in VRS. I can, it only happens in VRS. I can see them getting, you know, upset when I misunderstand and the anger will happen, but not really disappointed in our work and our actual interpreting. And that we don't really, you know, take responsibility for our interpretations. And that we're not trained properly. Do you know what I mean? And I 
and I feel that our inter our interpretations can be misconstrued really easily. But you know, how do you control that situation? Do you talk with the consumer and try to see, you know, how that's happening? And you know, maybe if you ask them, wait, I'm sorry, I missed that, and just own it, that they will trust you, and the consumer will learn and learn to trust you, and the communication will be much easier. So you could have one deaf consumer, for example, just you know, signing whatever they're talking about, and they use an odd sign that you haven't seen, and then you try to figure out what they say, and you've never seen that sign before, and then they say, oh, it's this sign, this is really what the sign means, and then you realize, and then you have another consumer that will sign something else that you don't know, and they were really nice about it. And then they will apologize and, you know, have a different approach to it. So, you know, it's not always my fault, and I don't understand why they're always, they can always get mad at me. It's not my responsibility to make sure that they're clear. They know sign language, so if I don't understand them, I'll ask. And, you know, if they think that I should know, how am I supposed to know that? That's why I'm asking for clarification. That's kind of where our, you know, relationship starts. You know, if the video pops up and they're smiling and they want to connect, that's immediate trust that happens with me as an interpreter. If I, you know, am trying to clarify a sign, they'll realize, oh my gosh, okay, this is the sign. And then they'll start to build trust and that relationship with the interpreter. It's not always VRS that you're going to have these situations. You know, you'll graduate, you'll get a job, and you'll think to yourself, and you'll feel in your gut that this isn't my job. It's not my job to make, your ha make you happy, make sure that you're happy. It's not my job to make sure that your signs are clear. I don't always understand you. It's my job to connect the call. You know, see, are you understanding? Yeah, uh, ask the student, for example, in a situation to tell, ask the student to tell, the te ask the teacher. So it's not my job to figure it out. So that kind of answers your question. And she was saying about the sitting all day, that kind of, she's afraid of that. So for example, Sorensen has workshops that will teach us as interpreters how to, you know, adjust your chair and adjust your keyboard, your body, and how to be comfortable and properly, you know, sit all day in that situation. And for example, we have our desks <laughs> and everything set up as a 90 degree angle. Everything is at 90 degree angles. Our head is positioned positioned quite the, um, in the right spot, and we're not leaning forward, we're not stressing our necks, and we have the proper equipment, and we're approved to use it. So, so, oh, <laughs> so sitting all day, and the struggle with that, in Milwaukee we have a station where you can stand instead of sitting. So, you know, you can stand or sit in that station, but you kind of have the option. So the desk is kind of set up where you can raise the, um, the video monitor and the desk. So depending on your height, where you want the video monitor, so you're not, you know, you want the desk at your um, waist level, and then you're also standing on a, a cushion mat, so you're not standing on like a hard ground for many hours. It's cushion. So we do have that. We have um, spe special chairs as well that can raise you up, and depending on you know your body type, it'll position you 
proper way. And then you can also move the desk, like I said, so it's in a comfortable situation and you're not uncomfortable and not sitting properly in each station all day. Question over here. So typically the interpreters will wear all black, right? But with Sorensen, if you're sitting, your bottom half isn't really showing, right? If you're standing, your only your your top half is showing. I mean, you're not naked on the bottom, but you can't really see the bottom. So, does it matter what you wear? <laughs> um, for me, yeah, it matters. We have certain policies at Sorensen that I and I have interpreters that wear jeans every day. You can. But, you know, it has to be nice jeans. It can't be the holy distressed jeans or um, the designs on the back of the pockets. You can't have anything like that. You know, or the ties on the side. And you can see the skin through the ties. Like, that's, no. But the top half, you know, yeah, it's typically black. But not me. That's not my preference. You know, you can wear green or um, corduroys, or corals, <laughs> or blue, dark orange, turquoise, you can wear purple, you know, sometimes I'll wear things, for example, like a scarf like that, like patterned, and a lot of consumers <laughs> think they look good, they're really happy that you're not wearing the same black that all interpreters wear all the time. You know, for the blind consumers or low vision, yeah, I'll put a jacket on and I'll have a smaller signing space. <laughs> but it just depends on the consumer. Oh, and then shoes, they have to be, you know, nicer shoes like dress shoes. Um, you can wear boots as well, but, I, you know, you can't wear flip-flops. You, can you can wear high heels. The sole is able to bend. You can't really wear anything like that. Like the, the heels bend, can bend, but if it has just a flat kind of like part, uh, platform, hard bottom, um, but it, you can use that. But nothing like foam or anything really like a flexible sole. <laughs> you know, ballerina slippers <laughs> like this. Okay, so like what Madeline has on right now. That's fine. 